Okay, this is a daily review with the tape reader, and it's uh, September 27th. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, as long as we're done for the day, this looks like what we've uh, achieved is 3.53%. Here's the profit right here, so it continues a non-loss streak, all winning days. And uh, before I show you the trades that I took, I just want to show you something that I think is pretty pretty powerful and you've heard me talk about the AWAP the uh, the uh, anchored VWAP before and you're going to see it used uh, along with my uh, reversal candles and such on the trades today but uh, I just thought I would take a look at the oil chart our oil seems to particularly respond well to using the uh, the VWAP and also especially the uh, anchored VWAP and I just wanted to show you today's trade uh, not trade rather the price action and this is the uh, <clears throat> the global open last night at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, somewhere right around in there. And you saw there was an initial pullback. And then it was uh, straight up. And I think it's continued even to this point. I think it's still straight up. Uh, but here's the daily VWAP right here, the magenta dotted line. You can see that it, it came back and touched it right there actually with a, with a uh, tweezer bottom. And... Um, that could have been an opportunity to get in uh, to get into a trade and let's say that we put our stop just below there and whoops I'm sorry don't want to do that um, let's get our measurement tool let's say we got in right here and the entry I would get in uh, this white candle closed above my trend dots and I would get in uh, on the opening of that green candle right there. So I'm going to put it right there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to stretch this all the way up to the what we see as a um, high right there. But I'm looking at my stop as only a $10 stop based on this chart with as much of a, of a stop. So I've used a, I'm using about a $40,000 account. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use uh, enough contracts that keeps me within about a half a percent risk. So there's $200 risk. That's 20 micro contracts or uh, 20 minis, if you will. And you can see that this just uh, went up nicely and it got as high as uh, about an eight and a half reward to risk up there. And you see I have a sign here that says eventual stop out. Well, what I would do, this congestion area would not have stopped me out using what's called the six ways the market moves. And that's a story for another day. And uh, so I would have stayed in there and it would have proceeded up. And uh, I would have gotten out right here. That would have been my exit. And uh, that would have been about a $1,200 uh, profit using the 20 contracts to keep me keep my risk where it's got to be uh, so let me just get rid of this off the chart so i can show you some other things here so we saw that first tap of a daily vwap right here ended up in a nice move here's a secondary tap right there that was at about that was the london london open you had you had the um, european open right about here and it pulls down, London open uh, opens up, taps the daily VWA, and then uh, it's pretty much off to the races from there. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the daily VWA level, it begins to get pretty accelerated here. See the slope of that begins to increase. And in the meantime, we had how many? We had that tap, a second tap, a third tap, a fourth tap on the uh, daily VWA. <laughs> So it's uh, really treating you good. So what I did is I put a, an anchored VWAP. As this began to accelerate in its angle, I put this uh, uh, anchored VWAP right there. That was about 10 minutes to 6 a.m. And you can see that it, you know, the price didn't get all the way back to the daily VWAP because it was at such a, a strong angle upwards. But it did come down and give you a chance to re-enter or enter for the first time on the taps of these uh, anchored VWAP. There's a second one, there's a third one, there's a fourth one, 
And I think that's pretty much, well, that's where we are right now. And uh, you could even go ahead and move that up, perhaps. And it's still so high that it has yet to come back and touch that. So that gives you an idea of the power of the uh, of the oil with the anchored VWA. Pretty darn strong. So let me get this chart moved over there. And so let's go ahead and take a look at um, what might have been the um, pre-market high on four charts. This is the 3, 6, 12, and 1 hour chart. And uh, what I do is I put my glo global uh, cursor crosshairs uh, right at this red uh, reversal candle right up there. And it's this is the same location, the same time right here on the 6 minute, same time on the 12, and the same time on the 1 hour. So you can see that, uh, you know, we were beginning coming into the uh, reversal down and uh, reverse down here. And on the uh, one hour chart, you can see that it was touching the pre-market high rate there. So it, it definitely uh, reacted off the off of the uh, pre-market high. And let's just see what some of our trades would have been. OK, this is the uh, MNQ chart and the micro chart. And um, we saw the price had come up. And what else we have here? We have um, falling um, sell volume and a resultant increase in the price. Uh, we have, and we had the uh, increase in the buy volume here. And we elected to get in uh, on the close below the anchored VWAP. We anchored the VWAP right here. Price came down and closed it. And uh, a couple other things you can see. Here's the New York Open, that yellow line right there. And here is the daily VWAP right there. Here is the point of control right here. So you can see it looks like price came up, uh, looking seeking for some liquidity there in that uh, supply area, and then began to roll over. So I elected to get in. Um, and I was seeing that the uh, the buy volume you know wasn't through the roof it was uh pretty pretty um tepid really so let's see what else we have here see how that trade went <clears throat> okay so it's uh proceeds on i'm in uh, the equivalent of a one mini contract and we see we get some selling volume taking place now you notice where i put my target um this line right here is the midway between the daily VWAP standard deviations uh, between the lower number one and lower number two deviation. You can see this DL2, that's deviation lower number two, and uh, number one lower is right there. It's hard to read. Uh, so I'm just uh, so cautious around those because price, at least the first time it comes down and gets near it, it'll, it'll almost... I'm not going to say 100%, but 90% of the time it'll it'll uh, reverse back up at, at least for a period of time, and then come back, challenge it, and then oftentimes fall through and hit the uh, DL2, the uh, lower standard deviation number two. So I elected to put my my uh, target there, and let's see what the next chart gives us. Okay, I guess really. Not much difference here. It's it's beginning to come down and and uh, threaten my target, and there it did. You can, I, I hit my target, so I banked that money, and uh, here we've got the price right at that mi uh, midpoint. And let's just see what it did next. Oh, for heaven's sakes, what did it do? See, it went right up here. Uh, so if you you ought to consider uh, for the longest time I marked these midpoints myself between the standard deviations, but uh, then I had a, a fellow uh, who was kind enough to take my advice and put this midline uh, in his indicator that I use, and um, uh, so that's been a help to me. And I don't have to worry about drawing it, you know, every time a candle 
forms. I have to change that. So that does, that happens automatically. So what I got in, I got in on the pullback, um, and there's your anchored VWAP. I, I hooked that to the high point right there. And, um, as price came back up and tapped that, I got in, I think it went against me a little bit, but look what it came up to. It came up to the New York open right there and faded it again. So I got in there with a mini contract, 10 micros, and the price came down here. And I think I once again put my target right there at that same uh, midway point right there. And let's just see what the next one is. Okay, so it, it hit my midpoint and boy did it go, right? So uh, obviously it was it was a mistake on my part to take that out, but who knows that in hindsight. I'm just trying to trade... Uh, trade uh, percentages but it does kind of pr prove my comment that i just made where i said it'll bounce the first time but the second time often goes through but i wasn't willing to do it i had a good amount of profit sitting on that and i didn't want to give it back um and i and i commented here that how it faded the new york open we see that the decreasing sell volume here um the initial held as high uh, volume sell volume brought that price down but then it started to diminish as buy volume built and you can see price responded and now we have sell volume beginning to build let's see what else we got here just like a story you know that the charts tell us a story and we've got increasing sell volume um and i've put uh the uh, anchored vwap here and i also put the second standard deviation upper and lower and you can just see how price just follows that down look at that just follows that right down they say that that's where the institutions oftentimes set their target and it just rides that right down and next one okay here's uh basically the same chart except i put another anchored vwap and i put it up here uh, in what's called the Caramilla uh, zones or, or pivots. I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, but I thought I would anchor that up there. And you can see that, um, uh, well, here's here's the uh, standard deviation number two level on, on this higher anchored VWAP. It comes down, down right like so. There's the bounce up. And we attached it here, then comes back down, rides it back down. That's amazing. And here's the yesterday's low, uh, which I uh, think is kind of like a magnet. That's an influential level. And by the way, this is opening range low, this red line right here. That's um, the first 60 minutes is the low right here. And the high is right there in the first 60 minutes of the New York session. And uh, it actually just kind of blew right through there. Uh, oftentimes it'll bounce on that. Uh, okay, let's close that down and see if we can learn anything on this next chart. What do we have here? Okay, we talked about that. We talked about uh, testing the uh, point of control, seeking liquidity. I think we pretty much beat that to death. And uh, oh, I guess what I'm pointing out here is the the sell volume. Uh, became kind of non-committal. See this? It had been rising nicely, but then um, it would be on this smaller um, candle right here, I hope you can see it, uh, it didn't have much conviction, nor on the next one, not much conviction. As a matter of fact, we got a, a reversal on that next candle going up. And what happened? It, can, it continued going up. You can see the there was that non-committed sell volume. We got the buy volume, a low sell volume candle, and then we got some uh, buy volume again. But it starts to see that sloping down like this. Uh, so that that was a clue to me that it was losing steam to the upside. And so here's my uh, anchored VWAP. And once that closed below that uh, anchored VWAP, I got back in uh, on that trade. Oh, before I pass on, pass, pass.
pass on. Yeah, that's like die, right? <laughs> um, before I move on, I should say, this is the Camarilla uh, pivots up here. Uh, this is an R3 level, and that's that's famous for uh, giving you um, reversals, and it sure was this morning. As a matter of fact, look at this reversal candle. It's red. That's what we look for up on the, you know, for a, 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 a yeah, reversal to the short side. That would have been a great trade right there. And then we had a second one here, this a red candle right into the Camarillo uh, pivot range up here. And uh, so you're going to see something interesting about these zones here in a minute. But let's take a look at what we did here. We got into this trade and it just dilly dally here for the longest time. And finally, I decided to get out of there uh, just because I just didn't want that thing shooting up on me, even though I did have my sell or buy volume diminishing. So that should have told the story. But sometimes I get to be a scaredy cat, I guess. And so she comes down and uh, I elected to get back in and uh Let's get some let's get some context of the uh, chart here. We've got growing cell volume. Uh, notice that just barely, I think you might be able to see that there's that short dash blue line, light blue line. That's that midpoint. In this case, it's between the lower standard deviation level number two and level number three. And uh, once it broke through there, I chose to get in there with another 10 micros. And my thought was to target the yesterday's low right here. And I think this turned out to be a pretty decent trade. Uh, let's see. Okay, I guess I had take, I think I had taken uh, profits on that trade I just showed you. And then, uh, it, um, when it came down, is that right? Hmm. Let's see. This is this entry was at 679 So I think I took profit on this and then got back in on this one right here. That's that's what I had done. Let's see how this materialized. Okay, is that coming down? Uh, nothing else there to show, really. Okay, it's moving further down. Remember, I was targeting this uh, yesterday's low right there. So that's moving in the preferred direction, for sure. And came down and hit it. That gave me a nice profit on that, hitting that yesterday's low. Now, you sit here and look at this, and you say, okay, it's down here near the lower deviation level number three i mean that's a heck of a on a, on a um, distribution curve right um you know a, a three standard deviation i mean that's a that's that's a good that's like you're into the tail of the distribution curve so it's pretty stretched when it's down here so you at least i begin to say well how can it go any further uh, but you know you learn in time that it, it will and it can uh, let's see what uh, see what it did. See whether it afforded us any opportunities. Okay, so here it's pulling back up, and um, again I'm showing you the anchored VWAP, solid magenta, and the dashed is my daily. And this is this is the lower uh, Camarillo uh, pivot zone down in here. You can see this is S3, and this was R3 up here. And B, I, I figured the B stands for band. It's the R3 band area and the R3, uh, S3 band area. And they're famous for being reactionary uh, zones. And they sure prove themselves if you look, if you study them, uh, for, for a couple of days. Um, so, uh, the thinking was, you know, maybe it's, it wants to target this area down here in this, uh, R3, uh, or rather the S3 zone. And let's see what it did. Oh, here I'm saying, you know, I'm just not sure here. I, I'm not convinced that the cell volume is is really 
you know, giving me a clear direction. So I just wasn't sure what was going on there. And then, of course, I still had that that mid uh, midline right there between the two uh, uh, daily VWAP uh, deviation areas. Oh, okay. I know what I did. See, when I wasn't sure what this cell volume was doing for me, I, 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 I hesitated. I didn't go short. And I'm glad I didn't, uh, because look what showed up. And once I saw this, uh, pretty demonstrative, uh, evidence of, of a reversal in, in a chain. Now, I didn't have a reversal candle. It wasn't a green candle at the extreme. But once I saw this uh, volume looking the way it did, and then breaking up here above the yesterday's low, uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to just get in there. And, and you can see I was confident. I went in initially with 10 micros and then added another uh, 10 for a total of two minis right there. And I just thought that was a bit of a reversal. I'm sorry, uh, a resistance area there. And, and uh, you know, rather than give up some nice profit, uh, just chose to get out. Now, I don't know whether it'd be interesting. I think that's the last of my, um, that is the last of my um, prepared slides. But let me get the live chart here a second. And that is the MNQ, right? Let me just bring this over. Okay, this is what you've been looking at in the form of slides. Now, just look how, I mean, this, if you, if you get comfortable reading volume, um, there was where I had gotten in, uh, up into this little zone that I drew, this, uh, cayenne, cayenne colored light blue zone. And it came up into that zone. I got out and then, um, uh, we saw, uh, some additional selling volume in here a little tough to read i think and we got some buying volume up to here up to this pivot high this is an isolated high right here with that little dot and, and the horizontal gold line so it comes up and taps that and then what do we get we start to get some pretty pretty sig fairly significant selling volume as well right and um, and then maybe another opportunity would have been when it broke b below this yesterday's low and also this midline between the deviation levels and hop right in there you've got a good trend dot coming down so that would have been a nice trade right there so i think that's uh that's it for the day and um i'm hope i'm hoping to uh, be uh, more proficient with the slides uh, as i do this more and more and also uh, try to stay fixed on on my primary ways of trading as as we discussed uh, the other day i'm inclined to go out and turn this way and turn that way with different ideas so uh, just for the sake of of making it uh easy for you folks to follow and maybe pick up and benefit some things i'll uh do my best not to uh wonder too much uh but you might want to consider um Looking into these Camarillo, Camarillo, I guess is the way you say it. They're uh, considered pivot points, and uh, use those as um, as uh, areas of uh, reaction. And uh, let me just get rid of some of this junk here. Uh, the one way to put them to use is that, as we already discussed, these could be areas of reversals, as you can see. We saw that one earlier here. And if I go, let's just figure maybe a 10 minute chart. And let that load up here a second. Okay, so here's today. There's bounce off, bounce off. It's down here now. Now the question in my mind is, are we going to see it go up? And if it, uh, if it is, I want to see supporting volume. And it just might give us, well, look at this. We've got a green candle, right? And this is a 10-minute chart. It might even give us a reversal candle to the upside, especially if, if uh, volume uh, follows. Yesterday, it opened um, a good bit of, uh, above. Let's just see where. There's our upper. 
So it came down, snaked around, fell down th through that, and gave us a pre-market pre low rate here, came back up to it, reacted off of it, came up here, reacted off of it. And I think that's a reversal we talked about yesterday, maybe. So you can see that it's pretty well respected. And um, uh, this was yesterday's activity here. I can take that off. Uh, so pretty interesting. Look at these. Here's the day before. Um, here's the open. This yellow line right here is the New York open. So it looks like it opened, maybe came down. Uh, didn't quite, didn't close below this lower uh, zone, the green zone, and then came back up, came back down, retouched it, and then back up to this zone and reacted off of it. So you can see why they consider these reactionary zones. And then the other zones, I'm not sure you can see these or not. Well, you know what? I think I can demonstrate it on today's. No, oh, no. Oh, that's right. It would have been it would have been oil. Let me just try something here. I want to make sure I bring this back to. Uh... Okay, this is a good illustration. They say that when when price gets above the R four or below the S four, then you're likely to be likely to see trends. So between these two areas, you expect um, uh, bounces off these two zones, the orange and the green zone. But if it gets up to R4, which right here, notice it came up and then retested it, and then it went up, came back, retested it again, and then it was off to the races, wasn't it? So um, there's your R4 level right there being demonstrated and proven. Okay, I've taken on way too much of your time, but I hope that's a help to you. And again, you know, if, if you like what you see, subscribe.